That's okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Olichka, maker of beauty, the uh, admin of the Krika Tips and uh, Tips and Tricks. I had to pause for a second to uh, remember the name of my own group. And uh, tonight we have an amazing Amanda, all the way from uh, Toronto, I'm sorry, Ontario with us, who is super talented with her vinyl wraps. She posts in the group often. I reached out to her to uh, see if she'd be interested in giving a class to us on the All Things Vinyl. She has gracefully agreed. And here we are having a live session to learn about the uh, vinyl. So we have a couple of people joining with us already. I'm hoping that more people join. But uh, if you didn't have a chance to join in, don't worry. This is being recorded and the class will be shared with you on the uh, YouTube. And again, Amanda, uh, take over, you know, share uh, something about yourself and uh, we'll start with our questions. I got to talk about myself. Okay. Um, so I, I do, oh, you can see my hair. Um, I do... I work for like a sign and vinyl shop. I do this every single day. Um, part of my responsibility in this shop is we have a graphic design team that will come up with these designs. They hand them to me. I will then be the one that sets them up for uh, printing. We have a wide format printer, or I'll be saying up to do like the multiple layers for the cut files and to, to have them plotted. So my machine has um, a bigger version, essentially, of print and cut, or just a Cricut machine. My machines are just 60 inches uh, long. So I, like, I'm responsible for knowing what types of vinyls to use, how to get my printer to print on them correctly, how to plot them out correctly. So plotting is having them cut. I will then weed them, uh, laminate them if they're printed, uh, and then pre-mask them which is the same as transfer tape. Uh, in Canada, we call it pre-mask. Um, and I will get it, the jobs all the way up to the point where a vinyl, like our, our installers would actually install them, unless they are like small signs, then I'll just do them like inside the shop. But we have a huge shop. So most of the time it's, it's one of the installers will then take that design and put them on like the trucks, on cars, on walls, on floors. So like, I think we've, Anything you can have, I, I, I've wrapped at some point. We've wrapped luggage. Um, I've wrapped my own fridge. I wrapped uh, remotes and like iPads and phones and game cases. So that's- So you said, um, you, you said something very interesting, right? You said that uh, um, you will decide like what kind of type of vinyl to use. So can you talk to us um, maybe like do the comparison, right? Like the type of a vinyl available in the uh, crafting world for the, the, the small crafters versus like, you know, do you use the same stuff in a professional world? Uh, and uh, are they made by the same companies, right? Or is it like separate companies? And more importantly, I want to know in your own opinion, right? Who is the best vinyl? Um, so we use the same vinyls that, that like the crafting community uses, um, except for we will use name brand. So Stuff like Oracle, Avery, 3M, uh, Vivid is actually getting very popular now. These are the, these are like major brands. And the reason why we use them is because they can be warrantied. We, we order our vinyl from a, like a, from like a, a warehouse, like somebody who's an authorized 3M provider. So if something fails, like a customer comes back and they say, hey, this like, you know, fell off, right? We can go back to our provider and be like, what happened? And if it was like a bad product, they give us back our money. So we will stick with name brands. Um, I have a list somewhere that I can share. There are a bunch of non-brand people who are making vinyls who are not the best. Um, I actually, today in preparing for this, actually was the first time I've used Cricut's vinyl. I hate it. It's pretty bad. Um, you're not, the, you're not, you're not alone. <laughs> I love uh, the machine, but you know, uh, not the vinyl. My, the, I have a maker. I absolutely love the maker. I love the machine. Um, I've, I've seen people struggle with, uh, with the Cricut's vinyl and I never really appreciated why I was just like that until like I, well here, um, I don't know if you guys can see the other thing. 
I made my test cup to show. And uh, so I used Cricut's funnel. I hate it. I, yeah. It's one of those things where like, if you've only ever used Cricut's funnel, it's, it's fine in the sense that you, I don't want to say that it's you just, you don't know better. Um, I have in my office probably six or seven different brands of vinyl that I'll use. I have a few different types of transfer tape and I can usually get them to stick to any surface without any issues, except for Cricut. I could not get any of my transfer tape to stick to it. And I had a hard time getting it to stick to this plastic cup. Um, and I have my reason, I have my, I have my guesses, but I can, I can go into that in a moment, but we, we, but like what your original question was, yes, we will use, um, uh, the same type of vinyl that you will use in, uh, like the crafting community you use. So I have a question, yeah. like many times you will say like, so we use the term, you know, um, 651 permanent all the time, right? But then if you actually read in the description, it says that the lifetime uh, of the vinyl is five years. So what does it mean that like, it's gonna stick on for only for five years or it means that it's good like from the, I don't know, like from the time it was made and it's only good for the five years and you have to use it within that five years and then it'll, it, it continues to be permanent. Or like, I mean, is there a such thing as a permanent vinyl or it only is permanent if you're going to seal it with something like, like, you know, when you put epoxy over that, even that also, you could probably send it down and still get to the vinyl, yeah. but you know what I'm going with this, right? Yeah, is so, it truly um, so let's start, we'll start at the very beginning. Um, vinyl is, is there, there's two main things that go into making different types of vinyl. So you have the actual ingredients that go into it, and then you have how it's being manufactured. So you will see people talk about, we call it cast and calendar. So calendar is a manufactured, it's how, it's how, you, it's, it's how you actually make the, the vinyl. It is um, a bunch of ingredients get poured in, they get stretched um, in through rollers, like pasta sheets, and they will get rolled and rolled and get squished into shape and they finally get to um, its desired the thickness, we call it film. So that's called calendar vinyl, and that is what the crafters community use. It is you. That's, that's what 650 Oracle 651 is. It's what Cricut is. It's what Starcraft is. It's what basically anything that you go into a retail store and buy. That's what you're buying, and it is good vinyl. It's it's fine, but it's it's only has very limited things that it's able to do. And I will get into that one in a moment. So the other half of that is cast vinyl. Cast is what um, the cricket, like the, sorry, I say cricket, but the, the crafting community will call outdoor vinyl or sign vinyl it is actually just cast. It's, um, this, it's that's a, that's an umbrella term. So that cast is Oracle 751 and 951. It is Avery's um, 750 series. I, ha I have a list. I can I can list those off of people. Um, but cast gets poured in. It gets poured very thin, and it gets uh, heated. And because it is not being stretched, it means that us as in vinyls or us as in installers are able to stretch it. So that is why people will recommend using the higher grade or outdoor vinyl or it gets called marine vinyl. It gets called like uh, outdoor. It gets called permanent. It gets called, uh, I've seen so many different names for it now. Um, it's all just cast. And, it's, and the difference between those two ones is because it has not been stretched while being made, it means that we can stretch it. And because we can stretch it, I can bend it around um, shapes a lot easier. I don't know if that makes sense yet. No, that, that makes sense. So, um, but then, so like once you put the vinyl, right? And say, so like, we're going to be talking about like the uh, 651, right? Yeah. And uh, it looks like Mandy's joining us too. 
So once you put the vinyl on something else, right? So this is a 6351, not the one that we cannot stretch because it was already stretched in the moment of the, at the time of the manufacturing, right? If you were to seal it, right? Um, and, um, I'm thinking something like, you know, like stronger, say like if we do the epoxy or if we do the, uh, um, uh, what do you, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Like, I don't know how to type it out. The stuff that goes on the wood in order to like seal the, the vinyl. Yeah, the, I, I don't know what they call it as well. So um, I'm, I'm simply not talking about the tumblers because that's a whole other craft. They, they seal theirs in epoxy because they're also sealing in other like the glitter and all the other stuff as well. You actually don't need to seal vinyl. So what you were talking about the years is um, the, the vinyl has um, two different like year rating. So vinyl, vinyl by itself have a shelf life. So by the time Oracle makes their vinyl and sends it off to a store to be to like to sell it, you have two years. So you have to use that product within two years, and that is to um, because oh here do I have sheets? I use paper. So. I am kind of jumping everywhere. So the adhesive, regardless if it's removable or permanent, comes in a two layer adhesive. So it's two like thin sheets on top of each other. And when you, when we um, scrapey or squeegee it or varnish it together, what you're doing is you're pushing the top layer adhesive into the bottom layer adhesive and that's starting the chemical um, reaction that is bonding it to the surface. That's why it's called pressure sensitive vinyl opposed to HTV, which is heat transfer vinyl. Wait, wait, so, wait hold up. So I have a question then. So then why this method fails when you try to put it on the wall that was painted in an eggshell paint? Like, I mean, like anything that is not like, you know, absolutely smooth, it fails. Uh, like I tried to do the, I, I tried to put something on my kid's wall and I have the eggshell and it just did not work. So the eggshell, so... The paint, it might be two different reasons. It might be because you were painting or trying to put your vinyl on too soon. Paint as it dries, it outgasses. So as it's drying, gas is being released. So that's always gonna stop vinyl from ever curing to it. Like the, the chemical reaction just can't happen. Um, and it also doesn't like texture and it doesn't like, uh, depending on what type of paint you had, if it was oil-based, it like it's at that point, the chemical reaction, the adhesive cannot cure to it. Oil and oil and vinyl will never work. It, it, it just it will never work. Which is what about when you buy decals from Amazon, right? Like uh, when I first my had my uh, my oldest one, like I was not a crafter at that point just yet, and I bought like uh, this um, decals from Amazon. They were basically like the stickers, heavy stickers, and uh, you know printed on some sort of a, like a plastic material. Um, it was not cut out like in a shape. It was more of a, you know, like parts of it were just sort of like a see-through type of a deal, right? And so it looked like as if it was like painted on the wall, but I was able to like uh, to put them on a wall and then remove it. Is that still vinyl or was it some sort of a plastic? And well, how, vinyl, you know, I'll say, vinyl is plastic. So one of the things we can, like, we can say right now is all vinyl is, is waterproof, it's plastic, which is different than sticker sheets, which I always see people saying like, oh, you can print on one and print on the other. They're two different products. One is paper-based and it cannot get wet unless you seal it. We talk about vinyl, which is plastic. It's already waterproof. So you don't have to seal it to make it waterproof. It's, it's already plastic. So it's printable, it's printable vinyl thicker paper or is it plastic? It depends which one you buy. Will, will it call it out in the product itself? So like, as long as, as long as your packaging says the word vinyl, it is, it's vinyl. If it's saying that it's sticker paper, it is probably paper. You can always, you can always check when you, when you get it out of the packet, you can see if the backing has, like, like pull, pull apart the adhesive, and if the backing of the adhesive is plastic or paper, then you know it's paper. So I, uh, I, I know that I'm full of questions. I'm going to pause and I'm actually going to let the, uh, the, uh, the rest of the audience to ask questions. So uh, I see we got Mandy with us. We got Dexter. We had, uh, uh, was it Jenny? So if you guys have any questions, by all means, you know, jump in and ask away.
Or they can just type it out in the comments. You can also put in in a chat. Huh. Um, I'm going to go circle back to the question you asked beforehand. Um, so vinyl has a shelf life of two years. Most, some have different ones. Um, so that, that's the time that you have to, from the time it's made to, to when you have to activate the glue, which is pushing those two layers together onto something. At that point, that chemical reaction is not guaranteed. Like, it's not like after two years, suddenly, bam, you can't use it. It just means that that manufacturer can no longer warranty it because we talk about this in business terms. So, like, if I buy vinyl and it's six months old and I go to stick it onto a car and it's falling off of that car, assuming we install it correctly, we go back to the vinyl, like the, the company, we say, what the hell? And they say, oh, sorry, we sold you bad vinyl. Here's new stuff. So you have a certain amount of time you have to be able to use it. Once that is chemically activated, then it's on there for, for how long, like those years say. So like Oracle is like four to six years. Yeah. Oh. So I have a question for you. So yeah. you said that the, 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 what makes the vinyl permanent is that the, there is a chemical reaction that's happening between those two sheets. By the way, I did not know that. Um, so when we get bubbles, right, like when we put something like on a round surface, right, and I have a bubble, does it mean that there was a pocket where the, that chemical reaction didn't happen and that's why I have the bubble? No, it means you trap there. Uh-huh. So how, no, do we, how do we push it out without having to like put the needle in? If so we get to that point, I did a, I do have a, like some things I can install to show you guys how to do basic hinge. Oh, somebody asked a question. Uh, UV resistant vinyl. Oh, that are print and cut. Okay, so if it's if you're talking about print and cut and you want it to be UV resistant, you actually need to buy um, UV resistant laminate. So that is not clear vinyl. Laminate is still plastic, but is a different type of adhesive that allows the adhesive to like bond to the ink that is on top of the vinyl. So like you can use clear vinyl and put like Oracle clear on top of your stickers and it'll be fine. It's just not the best option. You actually want to buy the uh, adhesive vinyl sheets and a lot of brands will actually sell UV resistant vinyl sheets. And that's, that's what you would put over top of your ink decals, which is the same as print and cut. I don't know if I answered your question. So what would be the process? Would you, so like, uh, would you design it, right? Then print, do the print and cut. No, hold on. Then you would do print. Then you would put your resistant vinyl on the top of it and then put it through the quick cut. Because yes. I'm thinking like, okay, so that, okay, right. So to make sure that when it cuts it, it cuts everything, right? Yeah. Okay, wow. so we, would, we would print it. So I print it with, um, so like Cricut has that black box. My printer does something very similar. It gives me registration marks. That's what that thing is, it's a, it's a registration box. Um, so I print it out, we would then laminate it. And then I take it the laminate and run it back through my plotter to, to cut out whatever shape I need it to be. That makes sense. So um, um, that, that's, um, okay. So when we buy stickers for the cars, right? Like my husband is, a, my ex-husband actually, he used to be like big into the uh, football team. And he's got these, uh, like, um, uh, is this how they had it? Um, or like they did something different? Pardon? So, so I have the sticker on the back of my car, right? And like the ink stayed on, like I think I had it now for like five years, right? So that sticker, was this, that was that sticker made the way you just explained it? Uh, probably if it's, is it, it's a, is it a four color print? Like it's, it's one layer that has multiple colors. It's multiple colors. Yeah. Yeah. So it was probably, um, it was probably printed on either like a Y format printer or somebody's like a printed cut at home, but it would, it would have been printed on, um, printable vinyl, laminated and then cut out because there's another thing I see all the time in groups is that they need to, you need to seal stuff. You don't seal vinyl. 
vinyl's already sealed. You, you seal the ink on top of the vinyl. So that's what the laminating is doing. It's protecting the, the ink, not the vinyl. Yeah, but with that said, right, when you, when, you take six, uh, when you take permanent vinyl and you cut it in like small ones, right, even when you adhere it to the uh, glass, it doesn't always do a very good job. Like I've noticed that the uh, 51 series by uh, Expression Vinyls, it holds a lot better on the glass when it's like in a script, right, in a cursive. Versus like even 651, like you know, at some point an edge or something will uh, lift off, and over time, right, especially if it's on a kids bottle or whatever, it, it will come off. So, is this just a limitation of a product, and we're like we don't understand that it's when it's too thin, it starts to lose that um, you know the chemical reaction, and it just you know it, it won't stick. So it's without without seeing um because we get this we get people call in all our time asking this it's either one of three things it's either going to be that the install process wasn't done perfectly i can actually show you something like this so i don't know if you guys can see um here's a here's a glass that i did really quickly to show somebody but you can see hopefully there's little bubbles and that these things are like lifting up I don't know, can you guys see that I can see that. So like there's like, so like even here and here, like, so but that is, those are all fail points. So while like this feels like it is down, this will fail. Um, just because those parts that like the water or me just touching it will eventually rub this up um, because this was not installed perfectly. So they could, we could be doing the installation to get it perfectly. Pardon? What can you do during the installation to get it perfectly? Uh, practice. Uh, this, so I, I, I do have, um, I do have stuff that I, I, like I made, here's a, here's the paper one. I do have like these things that I can actually show you guys how I do install them. Um, but I figure I'd ask, answer all your questions on the vinyl first. So you're, the question was so it's either somebody has installed it um, poorly and there's there's gonna be a bubble, there's gonna be an edge that's gonna lift up. Uh, this one, see this is one of those things where you can actually won't be able to see it. So this is um, cast by or this is cast, this is our Earl Cal uh, 651, and here's our cricket. When I run my finger over these edges, I barely feel this one. This one is actually only two millimeter or two yeah, MILs, which is a thousand of an inch. Uh -huh. um, so this is like, this is the stuff that is using on your cars. This one is actually, uh, so Oracle, this one is 2.5 and Cricut is actually 5.3. So this is almost double the thickness of even 651. And both of these get sold to us as being the same. They're not like this, like I can feel this, like I can sit here and rub this up and I can probably eventually like be able to just catch a nail, like get some water. You can even see that I just barely rubbed it and I'm already, oh, you guys can't see that. So would it be fair to say that the thicker it is, the more likely it's come off? Yeah. So when, when you want vinyl, the thinnest you can get it is the best. You, you want your vinyl to look like it's paint. So for example, this is a glass that I did. This is using cast. If I get a good angle on it. So even though this vinyl is three layers thick, you can barely see a profile on it. Wow. What company does the cast? I want that vinyl. So this this would be this would be the, the equivalent of Oracle um, 751. Uh, what they call marine grade, I think. That's one of the yeah, things. So they I call see. this marine grade, outdoor vinyl, um, shop vinyl. But this would be, so like this, I've had this on this uh, glass for over two years. Um, like I'm rubbing my hands off it. I can't feel anything coming up. Like even all the points are still like perfectly on. Um, my husband is not gentle when he washes things. So like we scrub this. So that that is just because uh, when we're doing our cups, we're handling them. So your thicker vinyl, is going to fail 
faster because it's going to um, there's there's more of an edge. There's more of a profile to catch like to to catch. That's one of the reasons why I actually hate cricket is because this is so damn thick. There's no reason for this to be this thick. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have a question for you from somebody else. It is the uh, what is the best way to prep surfaces like glass and plastic? Uh, I so we we wash them and we'll wash them clean first. Um, I'm used to getting trucks and cars that are filthy, so we soap and water, and then we do what everybody else does, where we use um, the rubbing alcohol or the isopropyl isopropyl, and we will like. Uh, spray that's what's, in, oh, that's what's in this so we just like spray it and you just wipe it down uh, and what that is doing is taking um, any contaminants that are on your glass your plastic your ceramics because uh, we have oil on our fingers and any sort of like vinyl hates oil absolutely hates it so you will notice that like sometimes if you touch something and you try to wrap vinyl like it is it, that could be an area where the the adhesion doesn't stick because you've you've touched it. So, um, what about people like putting the um, permanent vinyl, right? Like putting in the oven on the low um, temperature and letting it bake, right? I mean, like I know it's a very controversial topic, and then some people swear by it, and they feel like that prolongs the longevity of the vinyl and also adherence. And others just say, no, this is absolute crap. It, like, it doesn't do anything. If anything, you're probably killing your family because of the fumes. So, so does heat help? Um, it helps with cast, not calendar. So the crafting vinyl we have cannot be post heated. So when you heat your vinyl, you make your vinyl malleable. So it becomes soft. So we like it because you can you can bend it around a cup. You can bend it around something, and it's it's good to get it to get it to stick. But once it starts to cool down, because it is calendar, it's already been stretched out. It's gonna want to shrink back to that flat state. And I'm, I'm, I realize I'm talking with my hands, and you guys can't see that. Um, so you you apply heat to make it soft, but once it starts cooling back down, it goes it goes back to being flat again. So if you haven't gotten that adhesive to really stick, like this, like this will be fine. This is not going to pull up because this curve is very gentle. But if you try to like wrap it in a car or something had like a very like where it had to like really bend around a, a, a really tight, I don't have yeah, this handy, unfortunately, to show you. Um, well, that martini glass that you have, did that lift it? The one that you, the martini glass that you have, like the, so this is this is cast, so I'll get to that in a moment. So calendar can't be post heated. So it's going to, once it cools back down, it's going to want to try to go back to its original shape. And its original shape was flat. Um, so that's what happens when you have your very thin fonts or your very small decals. You don't have enough surface area sticking to your, to your surface. So when it cools back down, it wants to pull back up again because it's trying to go back flat. So, Amanda, I'm, I'm curious, right? It seems like such an easy resolution. If you're working with a script, right, and you're working with a curvy surface, just go with the cast, and it, was, and it pretty much solves all of your issues. So yes. It's so simple. How is it that, like, I mean, even it was me, right, having done, like, you know, enormous amount of cups and whatnot, like, I did not know that. Why is it not... Uh, I don't know, is this like a well-hidden secret and we just discovered it? So this is something that I didn't realize was an issue in this community, in crafting community, until I started joining. The, like, yeah, like the, the easy solution is, is if you are having a product that you are handling a lot, like your water bottles, your mugs, your whatever, if you're having a product where it is the, the surface is going to be like matte finished or slightly textured, or is going to be like just basically not perfect, smooth, hard surface, or you're going to have something that's going to be like rounded. Like, like, like this is, this is, this is simple. Like I'm talking about something really extreme. I don't have one handy, but something like this, like if I needed to get it to bend over all this, um, that'd be like a calendar couldn't do that. Or if you have very small 
lettering, very small details. The best option is always to use a, cal or a cast vinyl, which is the Oracle uh, 751. Unfortunately, they don't sell that out to retails. They, they think that we don't need it. They, they think like, oh, don't worry, this is all the same. You, you can buy, you know, your stupid, thick, crick, cricket vinyl and do all of these amazing things that you see. And I'm sitting there being like, no, you can't. And when I try to like go buy correct vinyl in stores, they don't, they don't, they don't sell it. I think Michael's is, I think that's what that new um, scotch uh, outdoor, I kind of saw it, but it's so expensive. Like I generally actually got angry today when I went shopping to be like, wow, they, they don't, they don't sell this to people. That's why like a lot of the online stores are starting, starting to sell the Oracle like 751 because we as like crafters are starting to demand it. Wow. Okay, you just opened my eyes to like a whole new uh, controversy, I guess, you know, like new reality. I did not know that. Um, yeah, See, that's the problem is nobody knows. The, the people who make the vinyl basically, uh, it's, it's unfortunate to say, but essentially the big brand companies like 3M, um, Avery's, not Oracle, Oracle's getting into the game, but the big, the, the big ones don't care about the crafting community. Like they, they, they make so much money in the shops that they don't feel the need to market to us. Oracle's getting into the game because they realize, oh, we have like economy vinyl, we have like 651, we'll sell it to the crafters, they'll be able to make their decals. They didn't realize that a lot of us now are taking our cricket machines and turning them into businesses. And once, like, once we're doing that, like we're not just making simple flat signs anymore. We're, we're making really complicated stuff. Like you guys are making things that I would make in the shop and you have no support. You, you don't have people coming to you. Like I have, like when I work, I have people from like Oracle visiting our shop. They basically say, hey, we have a whole bunch of new products. Here's some samples, try them out. And I say, great, I have new toys to play with. Nobody does it for us. Like nobody does for the crafting community. Yeah, those <laughs> Pardon? I said, send it to us. But like, um, we don't. Like I have, um, I, I can link things. Like they, they release things called a technical data sheet, which is, uh, I, I'll throw one up into the one of the, the things, but it, it's basically Oracle will release something for 651 that says exactly what it is, exactly what you can use it on, how you install it, how you do like, it. It tells you everything about it. But when you go to Michael's and you walk down the craft aisle, all you see is, oh, it's permanent vinyl. It can do everything. And I'm like, no, it can't. Is that information available like by going to the Oracle website? Um, at yeah, it's like all this, all this information is free. They just don't tell us. Right, so a lot of it really basically comes down to our knowledge. I mean, if we know an education, if, if, if we know that it's available and we can go and get it and download it. I have a question for you. So is this, um, is the companies, okay, I understand why like 3M and Avery don't want to get in a crafting game because they're like, you're a small peanut. You know, the, 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 the yeah. bigger industry, right? I get that. And for, the, for example, for the Oracle, right, that does cater to crafting community, is it cheaper for them to produce the calendar vinyl? And that's why they're not pushing so hard the yeah. cast. Okay, so the calendar, the calendar binder, it's, it's cheaper to produce. So why it's, it's also why it's cheaper to, um, for us to buy. Um, I, I, was, I was going to try out and I maybe next week I, I might suck it up and buy that, the, the, whatever the Scotch guard is, whatever the new stuff that's at Michael's, I'm pretty sure that is cast vinyl. I'm pretty sure 3M is starting to get into the game and giving us like a cast vinyl for us to play with. Um, but I know that there are some websites that do sell uh, the 751 like to, to us. And it's one of those things where if you guys start using 751 or start using cast vinyl, you're not going back. You will never go back to to cricket. Like you will just be like, I'm I'm done. I'm not using it anymore. It's 
Like, it's great. For, like, all the mom tiles and the family tiles, the the 651, this is perfect. Even Cricut, it's perfect. It's, it's flat. It's glass. It's hard. Like, if, I, if somebody wanted to buy this from my shop, like, the place I work, we would use the exact same stuff. Because there's no point charging you more money for a, for a type of vinyl when you don't need it. It's just right now, nobody's selling us... Um, in a retail store, nobody's selling us uh, cast vinyl because us as a community don't know to ask for it. Nobody, nobody's saying like, we want this, start selling it to us. So I, I see a lot of like uh, uh, overseas businesses, right? Uh, getting into the vinyl game. Um, and I myself actually had bought like uh, a, 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 a whole bunch of like starter, what I call them like starter kits from Amazon because I do a lot of painting with the kids. And they typically sell it like, you know, quite cheap. And I'm like, well, why should they use more expensive vinyl for stencils? Because it's a one-time use and I'm going to throw it away, right? So are these companies, you know, um, but what I want to say is that some of them actually have, you know, like cousins who surprised me where they've given me like very good results. So I made this cup with my kids, right? It's a dollar, a dollar store cup and it's a super cheap vinyl. And it did great. I mean, it's like, I've had this now over a year. I obviously don't put it through the, um, through the dishwasher, but I wash this every day because I use it every day and it sticks. And I can tell that it's pretty thick vinyl. So are these companies okay to buy from or is it best to stick to like known brands? Um, if, if you like that, like if it's working for you, then it's probably fine for that, like that type of product. Like your cup is, is not, it's, it's, it's pretty flat. Like even though it's a curved surface, mm -hmm. it's not like a really sharp curve. I had somewhere to show you one. I just don't know. Like, like the bottom of this, like that's a really tight radius. So like it probably would have a hard time trying to get around a curve that tight, but it's, it's fine for your glass. Cause that's, that's what it's made from. It's, um, it's, it would be hard to try to take like that type of vinyl. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know exactly what it is, but like, for example, I would not be able to, to do crickets on, um, like I would not be able to wrap this in cricket vinyl. It would, it would start to fail. It'd be too thick. I would be able to start, I would start catching the edge and start pulling it up. So for the people who work with the uh, uh, with brides, right, and they make like the, you know the bridal packages and whatever, and uh, that tends to often have like a, a a script. Would you say that you know in those places to make sure that it's like a, a solid gift, uh, that the best thing to do to you know to go with the, the with the cast uh, vinyl if you can get your hands on it? Yes, um, if cat like I'm the type of person where I will always use cast. I, I'm just so used to it. Um, if you can get cast for a reasonable price, like that, like that's another issue where, where we, we have is, is trying to find it where we don't pay an arm and a leg for it. Um, yes, like you want, you want your vinyl to be the thinnest it possibly can, especially if you're using like lettering that's under like a quarter inch. So at work on my big plotter, we regularly print like one sixteenth inch high detail, like high lines, mm -hmm. like a thick lines, I should say. And we don't have an issue because it's, it's a cast vinyl we're using. If I try to do that on the Cricut, I don't even know if we could actually cut that thin. Like I think it would just it would just peel and curl up because it's so thick. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I've noticed that the backing is also different between different products. You know. Um... I think like expression vinyls, I feel has the strongest backing. With that said, while it has the strongest backing, it's actually very easy to weed. So for the detailed stuff, I tend to like yeah. them a lot. So that that was one of the things I actually thought was really weird with the, the Cricut's backing paper. When I cut it, um, it weeds really easy. I, however, couldn't get any of my transfer tape to stick to it because it's uh, like transfer paper is a you, it has to have more adhesion to your vinyl than your vinyl has to your backer paper. So when you pull it away, it actually sticks to it. And then it has to have less adhesion than the thing you're sticking it to. So that when you pull up your, your, your prima or your, sorry, your transfer tape, um, your vinyl stays behind. And yes. 
I have, I use like the same two brands of um, transfer paper and the Crick was the only one it wouldn't stick to. And I was just like looking at, I was just like looking at it and being like, what is this? Like, why is it like, why, why I won't stick to it. And it was just, it was super, like, I, I still don't know. I'm probably still going to play with it a little bit more, but I was, I was just generally confused as to why it wouldn't work. And I was just like, I don't understand. <laughs> you know, they, I, I, sometimes I feel like I love my machine, right? But I often think that the Cricut is a good example of how a good PR is like sometimes more important than the actual good product. Yeah, like it's one of those things where the, the machine people, people who make machines, great job. People who make the vinyl, bad job. Like it's it's one of those things where like there's always a trade off. It's either going to be something that's very easy to weave but hard to cut. It's gonna be something that's easy to pull off the transfer paper, but hard to weed. Like it's it's finding that balance. Right. Oh, what brands do I like? Um, I use uh, I use this. It's mine's paper. Um, although the stuff I have to show you, if we ever get to installing, I might get to installing after. Uh, is uh, the clear stuff? This is called Brightline. Mine comes on a roll. Um, I bought mine off of Amazon. It's expensive, but it lasts you forever. I think I've had this for six years now, seven years now. Um, I use, it's paper, so I can use this for wet installs. I can use this for uh, anything. Do you I reuse it? Pardon? Do you reuse it? Uh, no. Okay. I should, but I don't. <laughs> That's a benefit of working at a vinyl shop. By the way, I have a question for you. Um, does your shop ever like, you know, keeps the, the scraps and gives it away? Uh, my shop actually donates them. Uh, we, I used to work in another shop that would uh, like just hand them out to whoever, uh, whoever came by. Uh, they actually uh, will donate them to like one of the local schools. We also don't have that much scrap. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty good at nesting all my jobs together. So, but the scraps that I have are like small little, um, are small little pieces, anyways. But I, however, I also answer questions. But I'm also gonna do a simple install for you guys. I'm gonna make this. Is that is, um, um, hold on a second? Is that already um, transfer paper, or like what are we looking at? That's, this, this is my paper. Here's the actual vinyl stuff. Uh, so all I have done is cut it all out and weed it. So I can still answer your questions. I'm also going to show you guys how to properly install things using a hinge method. So I have all my little, all my little pieces. I'm going to install it just on a sheet of glass because it's what I have handy. You guys might lose me for a while for a minute, but I'm still here. I'm just uh, picking up with my laptop. So, oh, we're ready to go. Okay, let's try and work really through my transfer, my clear stuff. So, I'm actually going to do the thing that I don't recommend people to do. I bought this is the, the dollar store like shelf liner. It's clear. This is a great hack. However, this should, if you are ever leaving your, your transfer tape on top of your vinyl for like a long time, you can't use shelf paper. This will actually start adhering to the vinyl quick. So that's why you get, that's why it still feels tacky sometimes after. I, however, I'm gonna quickly do it because I'm gonna do it all right now. Heat up roll of vinyl. Where did my scissors go? There. You can still ask your questions. Okay, I want to know, right? Like at the weddings, when they install those uh, mirror looking like things. Um, and I know that it's, it's a brand oracle because I hear them, you know, like say it's oracle, like they'll put in the comments. What kind of uh, like vinyl is that? 
And what I noticed about it is that they can reapply it. So if they stretch it, right, and it starts to get, uh, I don't know, like it's not going the way they want it and whatever, it, it, like they can literally like fill it up, lift it up, and then like reapply it again. So what, what is that? So that is called wrap vinyl. I can, I can show you that if you want. If you want to do that, I can just jump right to that if you want. So this is one of the things where once you see it, it's, it's bottle on drugs. So I was gonna wrap this. So that's what this is. And what allows it to do it, is the backer of this isn't white. Let me see if I can get it up. Let's see if I can get a good close shot of it. Okay. It's silver because um, it, this is actually a metallic finish. I've got to see if you guys can actually see that honeycomb pattern. There's actually a honeycomb pattern in here. Oh, that's not showing it very well. Mm. Mm. Let me see if I can find another one, does. Oh, that's better. Oh yeah, I see it. I see it. I definitely see it. So those lines right now. So so unlike the other um, adhesive that was two layers, this is actually three layers. So I have my two layers that once they get pushed into each other, we'll start the combination. And this is a third layer that is sticky enough to stick it to the surface, but not so sticky that I can't pull it back up again. And not so stick and it has actually a whole bunch of pull channels. So I can actually push um, air through it and my, my bubbles won't get trapped. When you wrap your uh, mouse, right, like the one you were showing it, did you have to cut it first or you just cut out the piece? Well, you're going to do it, right? So I'm curious. You just do this. So I am going to show a sample of it first and give all you guys heart attacks to begin with. Is it is a wrap vinyl available to uh, to crafters, or that's only available to the professionals? You can buy this online. I I, I do see um, I do see wrap vinyl on Amazon all the time. Uh, stick with Vivid or stick with uh, 3M. You know, if you have a list of like recommended stuff, right, um, along with the uh, um, along with it, like I'd love to uh, put it in as a resource in the. Yeah, uh, I'll say I, I have that. So normally that would be ruined. Like it's, I wrinkled and I've touched it and you can't use that again. Except for that this is wrap vinyl. So. Let me just grab my seat gun. You can get it out? Yep. Wow. Okay, I gotta move my camera up a little higher though, just so my heat gun doesn't make my camera upset. You can use this with a hair, uh, if you have a hair dryer as well. Oh yeah, oh my God, look at it. So that's how they do it. Yep, so it's just the vinyl. But is, is any of that reusable? Or this is like really one time event. And once it comes off, they. Yeah, no, no. Once it's on, it is on. Like I, I wouldn't be able to pull it back up and then use it for something else. Okay. Is, I'll say you're, there is types of vinyl that um, like you can, like, uh, like a store, like, you know, they'll have like a Christmas sale and they'll have like a giant cigarette that says like on sale now and they'll stick it on a wall. Uh, and then when the sale is done, they can pull it back off. Um, it's it's just a different type of vinyl. We would call it depending on what brand you have it, but it's basically like spot on. Like you know, um, you know, uh, glue beads. You have a piece of paper. You rub it on a, like a sheet of glue beads, and you pick it back up again, and it, it's not yeah. sticky. It's the same. It's it's the same concept. It's the same concept. It's a uh, it's vinyl that has a whole bunch of like basically vinyl glue beads that are that's like removable vinyl that you can stick on um, it will stay up for like a couple months or maybe a year and then you can pull it back off 
you stick it on somewhere else, pull it back off, stick it on somewhere else. As long as, as long as the area is always clean, like you, you reuse it a couple of times. What about the machines? Like when you see the big trucks, right? And uh, like they advertise their own business and whatever. What kind of vinyl is that? For the, sorry, what kind of machines? Like when you have a van, right, that is advertising their own business and they got like painting on it, like produce and whatever, along with like call this number and such. Like I can see that it's some sort of a plastic something there, right? It's not painted on the machine. So like what kind of vinyl is there? Is it a permanent? Is, I mean, is it a calendar? Is it a cast? Is it the laminate, you know? So if it's, if it's printed, it is probably going to be uh, like a printed cast. So that they can, um, so that it's it's printed and it's laminated. You can then, uh, if it's if it's a giant machine, like if it's a giant wrap, it would be the same stuff that this is. You can buy this in printable. Well, crafter community can't buy it in printable. My shop. Can. Um, so we would print the graphic on top of it and then be able to stretch it around a vehicle. If it's just like um, like a door graphic, like something that's not like. Um, so that's not the full vehicle, like it's not a full print. Um, they would just use uh, the cast vinyl. Like if it's just like, like you know, your numbering, your lettering, a, a, a business logo. So I'm just kind of curious, right? Like, so it sounds like all this different type of vinyl would be popular with the crafters, like once we understand what it is, how come nobody is like getting into the business of reselling it, like buying it from the 3M and whatever, and then selling it off to, uh, to crafters? It's because nobody knows. I, I've I've watched um, when the people who who like own websites will do like their their videos and they'll be like oh here's our new products like they don't even call it cast or calendar themselves like they don't know that they should be buying it and I think it's only like in the last couple of years that I've started seeing because like we as a community are starting to ask for it that like people are starting to be like, well, what is this vinyl? And can we start selling it? Like it's, it's happening. It's just, we have to be the ones that first start asking for it. We have to be going to um, all of our local stores and being like, you need to start carrying cast vinyl. You need to start carrying Oracle 751. Like you need to start doing this. We will buy it from you. Yeah, I think I'm gonna check out actually Etsy, like on those keywords and see if, you know, like if there are stores available. Um, and I will do like a whole write up about it. Cause like, honestly, you know, I did not know any of this. Yeah. Wow, it's so, um, it's so stretchable. Yep. And it's stretched because this was poured. So if this wasn't already pre-stretched when it, um, so like I, I would keep heating this and I would keep, by heating it, it would, it would, it would slowly work that out. It's just, it's hard to heat it while I have a camera in my face, my phone in my face. I'm more curious how you're gonna get rid of the excess. That's what, that's what I always wanna know. The yes, the what? Excess, right? Like the extra that you don't need it. Like, uh, uh, like how are you gonna, Oh, I cut it. You know, I know, I know. But like, I want to know how you like um, uh, get it all aligned so that, you know, it looks, it looks seamless. You, uh, I probably should have shown you that first. So like, I'm going to, I'd wrap it to this edge and tuck it under and then with my blade actually like follow this line. Uh, let's see if I can get here. I can try to finish one side. So Amanda, like in a crafting world, right? Like we have a decent amount of uh, bloggers who will talk about the product and, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, because I started the whole like sublimation groups, right? I'm also discovering pretty decent bloggers who blog about the sublimation and they will actually try to educate people about the user. I'm wondering like if in your world of uh, people who work like with the vinyl on a, on a large scale professional layer level, are there bloggers who like try to educate and basically share what you shared with us today? Like how the vinyl is made, you know, different uh, grades, like um, 
the, the application, the use, and so on? There is. Um, they're usually not, if you're trying to find them on YouTube, they're not going to be like crafters. They'll call themselves actual vinyl. Like if you actually look up um, like sign shops, like if you actually like Google, like people who are doing vinyl installations or sign shops, you'll actually find the like professionals doing it. Um, that's also one of the things that like um, I am like part of the thing that I, I can actually, when I when we're done this, I'll post to you is me actually writing up an actual like detailed uh, like vital 101, something that goes through all of the cast and calendars and stuff that goes through all the things. So the end, the end goal will be, you will look at a product, be like, oh, okay, because I needed to do these three things, I need to buy this type of vinyl. And then we could have in the group, like a, a list for them to look up and be like, okay, I need to buy cast vinyl. I'm going to buy these type of brands. And then they can like find a local source or find online. But like, um, right now that doesn't really exist because I really don't know why. Yeah, um, well, maybe you're about to change the, the trend in industry. Yeah, I, I definitely think if we can get, if we can get like the members and the groups, like people on the Facebook to, to start calling it correct terms, like start stop calling it craft vinyl, start calling it calendar and cast, start calling it by proper terms. And then they would go to our, like our vendors, our suppliers and be, and basically saying, this is what we want, sell it to us. Yeah. They, like, uh, <laughs> Ready to convert from the uh, from the calendar to craft to the uh, cast for starters. I'm doing a really bad job of, of getting this to stick or to get down. But I just wanted to show you how like you're asking how I would finish it. We would normally get it to an edge. So uh, is this what you use for the colors too? Yeah. So th this is this is the same stuff. So this is uh, this orange I actually took home from work because we wrapped somebody's car in this orange. I also wrapped my husband's laptop in this orange. Sharp knife, very sharp knife. What you can't see is I have my pinky is actually is actually guiding. And this would not run into the problem that our vinyl can run uh, in a problem with the, with the cup where you can like lift the edge off and once the, the edge, you know, lifts off, it ruins everything else type of a deal. Yeah, so, um, so we would never cut on a vehicle. Um, so like I, I'm cutting on the actual plastic in, in a vehicle, there'd be a door and we would actually do it. Um, let's see if I can actually do it. We, we would actually do it this way on a vehicle, we would use like the edge of a door. This is not a sharp knife. And then you would tuck it in? Yeah, and then you would tack it, you would, you would wrap it in. And then when you're done, you would go over this edge with a heat gun. Because this is a, this is a cast, it's cast wrap, um, I would heat it. So like I was saying beforehand, calendar wants to go back to being flat. Cast, if, if you heat it, um, after it takes on that new shape. So I would heat this here. Let me, uh, let me just finish cutting this out. That's amazing. It's like a whole new world for me. I wish we had more people from the group joining us. I think like you would blow a lot of people away. Okay. Okay, so I actually did a bad job. So like normally they would, they would have it where this was wrapped over it because the bottom of my case is going to hold it together. But what I would do is I would run my heat gun and heat this up and then let it cool down. And it's actually going to remember this shape. So it won't, it's not gonna try to go back flat. It's, it's, it's like you almost like heat shrink it. it. It's not really, it's not what it's actually it's doing, but it's, it's very similar. And it, it, it stays that shape. So like I am actually changing its like resting shape. That, that's amazing. Thank you. I mean, like I always wonder about those little fine details and it's just- so That's yeah. what I did. So like that process is what I did 
with my mouse. It's what I did with my um, my laptop, though you guys can't see it. Oh, here. Oh, yeah. My laptop's been like changed. Um, you can kind of see my mess in the corner, but my maker, we put that photo up, but my maker is also the same. I color wrapped it. Uh, I don't know, I've color wrapped so many things. My fridge was the fun, the, the best one. I, know, I really like that. Like that, that, that really transformed the whole thing. And you know, it's so much cleaner than uh, to have to paint it too. By the way, this is, uh, we are now at 1040. So we are, uh, we have exhausted one, one uh, hour, one hour. Um, I know that you wanted to show us one thing. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see that and uh, you, I'll, say, I'll put the one layer on just to show you what hinge, uh, what hinge methane is. So uh, when you go to install vinyl, the first thing you need to do is put down your transfer tape correctly. If you have holes and you have bubbles in your transfer tape, you're going to have holes and you're going to have wrinkles in your, in your vinyl. Yes, and a contact tape always will have a lot of those. How do, how do you get rid of them? Um, Hey, starting on one end and uh, smoothing it as you go, which is what you're going to see. So, um, it's probably easier for me to do it this way. So, the first thing I'm going to do is make a hinge. If you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So, this is like, I'm, I'm going to do this the easiest, like almost like over complicated way. Like I can do it faster just because I've been doing this for 15 years. But for everybody else who's like your first time, like you should almost follow all these steps. So I peeled back a little bit. It's clear so you can't see it. I'm gonna flip it over. That's it's fighting me. And I'm sticking it to my mat. You guys can't see that. Hang on. So I don't even have the vinyl. This is just my transfer tape. But it means that I can now pull on this because this transfer tape is stuck to my mat. I pull back part of the transfer tape. And I'll stick my vinyl under it. And the glass up away. So you can see that this hand is still off. So right now, my my contact paper or my transfer paper is only attaching, is only covering this spot right here. It's actually still off of here. So when my when your your vinyl is bigger than your squeegee, you're actually going to do semicircles. So I'm going to start in the middle. And semicircle out. Start like push the, the air out. Yeah, so I'm pushing the air out. I'm gonna start in the middle again. So I overlap slightly where I've already put it down, and now semicircle out that way. And I'm just gonna keep going back and forth and do semicircles. Push it like so. Like my none of my transfer tape has touched the vinyl until my squeegee is the one that's pushing it down. And because of that, it, none of the air has it. Like nothing is being trapped because I'm constantly pushing it out in the semicircle directions. And um, uh, Amanda, you really only worry about the, the trapped air over the vinyl itself, right? Like in the between, if you see the trapped air, like do you try to work that out as well or, or, or that's not a concern? Um, you try to work it out. So like I'm, I'm actually watching, um, it's really hard to see. I'm actually looking at it on uh, you know, like this type of angle. So I can see that it's it's not, I'm not getting air trapped in. If I, if I saw a bubble, I would stop um, pushing it down and rework out that bubble. I wouldn't continue putting it all down until I got that bubble out. Because if, once, once you have all of us done, right? That bubble in the middle, it can't go anywhere. Um, so like when like your last resort is always taking the, the pin and popping it, 
that's a last resort. That is not like, that's not just a, like, oh, you just go to it. It's just a, it's a normal thing. It, it shouldn't be like, you should, you should be like, you can even see me now, like my fingers are still holding up my transfer tape from my vinyl because I'm not letting anything touch until I want my squeezy to actually touch it. Right. You know, I did not, I never did, um, like I never thought of this trick, but th th this is brilliant. I always struggle because I would normally put it like on the uh, on the vinyl itself, right? And then I would slowly try to unroll it and work it. But the way you have it, that, that makes perfect sense. So you can actually see that like it's like the it's still tunneling, but it's not tunneling where my vinyl is. That's just because this is really cheap. This is not correct right. traffic paper. So that's why it's doing that. But like anywhere it's actually on the vinyl. It's perfectly smooth because I took my time and squeegeed out as I went and I always had it lifted up. So that's, so that this is the first step is making sure that your, your, your transfer tape is on your vinyl, the bolts. So now I'm actually going to quickly cut out what I don't need. So I've actually left myself alignment marks. I don't know if you guys can see those. I left myself a little square, all four corners. I'll see why in a moment. You know, I'd like, I'd love for us to do the uh, another uh, meeting, but I think for the next time, right, maybe we can like prepare in advance. I mean, it's like, like, I did not know about this trip, I mean, uh, tip, and I have a feeling that like a lot of people are like me, and maybe you can, you know, like give us uh, five or six round downs, like how you put things on the, on a round surface, um, <laughs> like how to do this. This is something that, like, if we uh, people are interested, like, we can do, like, once a week, like, just be like, okay, guys, like, here, let's just learn about, like, vinyl. And then the second thing will be, like, let's learn about transfer tape. Let's learn about, like, how to do basic flat installs. Because if, if somebody can't do, if you can't lie vinyl flat, you're not going to lie vinyl on a curve. I think most people would probably appreciate a tutorial on how to do round things, right? Because we get the water, um, uh, we get the water stuff all the time. I mean, the water bottles, and also layering with the uh, permanent vinyl. Uh, it's hard for people like to get everything just so, so that uh, there is no overlap or everything just looks right. Yeah. Um, so the I I can say the the layering is the same. Oh, hold on. And then like one of the things that comes up all the time, people want to know how to package it or uh, like what's the best way to handle it when you do the, um, not the stencils, uh, oh my God, uh, not the stickers either, decals, decals, right? Like, you know, should you use the liner transfer tape or should you use not liner tape? Um, you know, like how to put the transfer tape the right way so that when people, treat, you know, finally put it on the surface, whatever surface that they want, it's not going to bubble up for them. Uh, yes. Uh, so I can say right now, um, there's no there's no reason to ever take your detail off of its original backer paper if you're sending it to people. Like you just put your transfer tape over top of it and be done with it. Uh, the reason why people want to lift it because they want to check it is usually because they don't know what transfer tape to use for what vial. So like transfer so that, That's why I'm wondering that, you know, for the next time what we should do is like, we should have a series, right? Like to um, uh, predetermine the topic in, adv in, a, in, a pre yeah. in advance and then just concentrate on that one topic. Yeah. If you don't mind, I actually would like to take a whole bunch of the, uh, yeah, I see like uh, 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 Jenny says, I'd love tips on how to apply vinyl to painted and stained wood surfaces in the future. There is so much conflicting advice. And Jenny, I agree, but there's tons of conflicting advice. Um, so that's what I would like to do, you know, going forward. We just take one pick topic. With yeah. Good. That, like that, that's that's going to be 
But I do want to take like a lot of what we've talked about today and just uh, put it up as a resource. Why are you putting that over the, over it? So this is so this is called hinge method. I, I was gonna let, I was gonna just get it ready. So a hinge method is when you essentially create a hinge. This this is this right here is your basic install for vinyl. If you came to my shop as an employee, this is the first thing we would teach you. So I have I have a line that marks my four corners that that match the four corners on my my sheet of glass because I don't like measure. So I literally will just line it up. Corners. Put down my tape. So now I have like I can see that it is lined up. I don't know if you guys can see that though. It, your transfer tape is up, right? Yes. So so like it's my 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 transfer tape is clear. So it's okay. So I do this right now. So right now, like this this is not going to move. Actually, just to make sure that's not going to move. Move this. Um, so this is so this is your your basic thing. So I'm going to pull back half of it at a time. Oh, you can even tape this back gently. So like right here, there's no vinyl, so I can just tape this in place or so hold it here. Cut this part away. You stay. And you can see that, like, I'm using tape, right? So, like, everything is secure. I can take my time. I don't have to rush to do anything. I'm, I'm once again going to clean this glass because I touched everywhere. And because I have a bit of my carrier sheet still here, I can actually like lift this up. And, you know, lift it up and get and get under there. I of course moved my glasses. It must be so handy for people who try to do the installs on the uh, like mirrors, you know? That's one of the big things, like the things start to uh, move around. Yeah, I probably should have actually taken this to the actual table, but Whatever, we'll go with it. So like, I've cleaned this, so I am going to unstick this. And the exact same way that I did my transfer tape, I'm now gonna do my vinyl. So I'm gonna start where it's still on top of my carrier sheet. So I'm just pushing really hard now just to make sure this thing. But you can see that it's, it's like I was I was constantly pushing it out. So now I have half of it down. I can lift up my hinge. Save that. I'm gonna rotate it so I'm, I'm right-handed, so I always go in that direction. I'm going to clean it again because I'm working with glass, so. Hmm. Don't slide on me. Gotta make sure that you don't touch your vinyl with your cloth, because you don't want to leave behind fuzzies. What kind of, um, is this, uh, what kind of, uh, your cloth? Is that uh, fiber cloth? No, what is it? Um, no, this is, uh, it's, um, it's a microfiber cloth. Microfiber, okay. Ugh, I don't like this. Same thing again. 
then my plate, my, my glass is moving too much on me. So I'm actually just going to tape it to the table. So I, I, I need to be able to hold this up. You see, you can see that with my fingers, I'm holding this off of the, my, my glass. So that's why I just tape it because I, like I'm, I'm pulling on it. So I don't, I can't have this move. And the same thing again. Okay, that one's kind of just in the way. Amanda, you opened my eyes to like a whole new world. So you can I see that. I struggle like to do it with signs to have them like, you know, aligned just so. You can see every time that I did a pass, I went over a spot that I've already, yeah, I didn't weed that out. Oh well, um, I just noticed something. So now, now I can, because, because you're always overlapping, there's never any chance for air to be stuck somewhere because it's always going to be being pushed out. So I actually save this. So I will reuse this one. The uh, contact paper? Yeah. Yeah. I like to use it. Um, uh, I, I like to leave the leftovers for the, uh, let me see. Okay, we're going to check you for bubbles. Yeah, you got no bubbles. Yeah, there's nowhere for the thing. So I actually did this on the back of it because I'm actually gonna put, I actually wanted the depth effect. So because this is glass, it's even more important to make sure you don't have bubbles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like the glass always bites me, you know, I mean, as it's a wow, like this is really, I'd love to do a lot more of this. I mean, like people will love it. If, if I mean, we can do wood signs, stencils, uh, cups, you know, the, the water bottles, it's, it's just, this yeah, is amazing. Like I would have struggled so much more because I would actually have done the opposite way, right? Like I would put my transfer tape, like align it with the uh, glass and uh, tape it to that and then slowly start pulling it while I'm working it with the squeegee on the top of it. And then yeah. it's really frustrating because your hands are everywhere. I mean, this is just like, now that yeah. I the demonstration I'm like what <laughs> so like, that like that right there is something that like like I said if you if you worked in in the shop like you would do that 50 times like we make parking signs where we'll have like an order of 100 and you have to get them done in four hours and you watch like me and the professional installers and it looks like we're literally throwing it on and like who is that and our new people are just like what and we're like, oh, don't worry. Do it hundred times in a day. You'll be just as fast as us. A lot of it is is getting used to um, is getting used to the feeling, getting getting to used to like how much you can you can stretch your vinyl. Getting like it's just something you just get a feel for, and like once you do. So like um, one of the things I can recommend for people is if you like Oracle six fifty one, stick with Oracle six fifty one. You get used to how much you have to cut it. You get used to knowing how it weeds. You get used to knowing these things so that like, yes, you know, you might be able to find another vinyl that is on sale and save you some money, but like that's that's a whole new thing you have to learn. It's like it's like learning it's like trying to drive somebody else's car. It's still a car. It's still the same thing, but it's it's not your car. Like it's not your vehicle. It has its own little quirks. Like you, you get used to vinyl, like stick with a brand that you like. I have a question for the next time, right? Can you do um, a round sign, right? Um, and um, um, ideally to do like with three different components in a different colors, because I do a lot of, I mean, selfishly, <laughs> I do a lot of round signs with my nieces and nephews, right? And the alignment is always like a problem for me, which, and because of that, I tend to want to cut like in one color, one piece, because like that's a simple, that, that's the easiest way for me to align. So if we could do the round one and like ideally three different components in you know, three different colors, because I would love to know how to align them to make sure that they all comes together. Um, that's what these are for. 
Right, but say, for example, that you had happy in red color, right? And then the Eastern in a different color. How would you align those two? Because you would end up cutting them on a different pieces of colors. Yeah, uh, I printed out a page to show you that. Where did I throw that paper? <laughs> So this is actually what um, each of the layers look like. So I had my dark color, and then I had like the middle green and the lighter green. They all have the same boxes um, in the same spots. So when this tile was down, I had four corners in each of the sides, and I literally would just line up the four corners and do the same method. And because the four corners are always the same in every single layer, it means that all the other layers will like lie up on top. But did you print this out from Krika or you print it elsewhere? I think that's a question. Um, I printed this from uh, Illustrator. But like you can do the same thing in Cricut. Like you can you can you can still set up in Cricut, like you can set up like this design. Like this is a free SVG file that I found on one of those like bundles. Right. And all I did was just add my four corners so that, there's my glass, oh, there's my glass. You can see that I have four corners in here. So when I actually like layer this on top. You align your corners. Yeah. So it's gonna look like that. My my white is, is bigger because it's supposed to be an outline, but you can kind of see the effect that it's gonna go for. Yeah. Anyway, so hold on a second. Can you align your glass one more time? No, 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 no. Like the, 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 the yeah, like I want to see because I feel like like it, it, it looks like it's off. So do you mind lifting it up? Well, Would I was just going to install it if you wanted to see that instead. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, okay, right. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, so the next time, you know, if we can, what we can do is the uh, like uh, discuss which project is going to be, and maybe if you can take us like from a very start, um, so that you know it's like if you if we are doing the uh, painted, like you know if you if you can um, cover like the best way to do the stencil, like you know what's the best paper on a transfer, like any tips and tricks, and we'll go from there. Um, I did a. Uh, uh a previous like we did it through Facebook Live, but we did it where it's like four or five people signed up, and I literally just like um, either designed like the SVG file and just sent it to them. And those are like here, like cut these out in advance, and we'll do the rest of the project together. So like we we did stuff together. We did uh, we added the transfer paper together, so I can be like step by step. Here's how you're doing it. You know, that's an idea and we actually could do it like the easiest way to do it would be to get one of the freebies from the uh, design bundle because that way everybody can uh, go in and download it and nobody has to share any of the uh, uh, files or anything. And then yeah, like if people want to it's like they can prepare in advance that, that, that that's actually a great idea. But that, that's what that's why that's why I use this file, um, because this is one of those uh, free um SVG files. I, I you know, we can do simple things too, like the cups from the Dollar Tree, like I mean the, uh, the yeah. United States, right? Um, um this right here is uh so I'm in Canada, so this is from Dollarama, but this is a Dollarama cup. Like they they, they carry these in stock. Right. So like the Dollar Tree has those martini glasses too. Yeah you know, like this 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 would be probably a very more like down the line because we have to deal with like an angle here but like this is something that like we could find standard products that everybody would have access to and be able to um like find files and be like okay guys like come to class with your with your materials already prepared and we will like, i will like walk I love that idea i think people will totally uh totally love it and we can even like try to do it for themes you know i mean uh, it's like 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 um whatever might be happening is like if it's a holiday because I'm sure like when it comes down to the Christmas time and everybody does those round things, everybody goes yeah. bananas over the uh, like how to get the vinyl on it so perfectly. Oh yeah, the, the, those, the ornaments. I, I was watching people try to make ornaments over Christmas and I'm watching them doing stuff and I'm just like, no, no, you're doing that the hard way. No, don't do that way. Just don't go fancy on us. Don't do it all with the cast because you know here we are with our 6 to 651 trying to keep up. 
<laughs> and it's not happening. So and it was even like um like uh well you, sometimes like yeah sometimes they would probably need to use tasks, but like even just like some of the reasons why I left other groups is because I would um I would offer advice. Like I'd be like, hey, here's, a, here's an easier way to do it. And people would just be like, no, you're wrong. We do it this way. I got to work like you're wrong. And I'm like, just because you got to work the one time does not mean that that is the best way to do that method. Like, uh, like with the wet install is a great, a great learning term, term for everybody to use or to like get used to as well. Like I would have done all, the, or, all of those ornaments using the wet install method. Would have made everybody's life easier. Yeah. Which is a different so when, when we get to Christmas, hopefully we're still doing this, you know, and uh, and uh, you can uh, set the people on the righteous path. Um, yeah. So in any case, thank you so much for this. I'm going to be uh, in the next couple of days or so, I'm going to be extracting a lot of the information that uh, uh, you've uh, educated us about. I mean, like I did not know the difference between the calendar and the cast um, stuff. Um, and then, you know, if you want to jump on that post later on and provide the link, so if people want to get, edu you know, like if they want to educate themselves about different vinyl available and such. Yeah. Um, I do have the write ups <laughs> um, of like what it is. I just have time, I just, I just need time to sit down and actually write it out. And I have one of my friends who actually comes back in and he'll edit it for me because he knows nothing about vinyl. I'm just like, when you're done reading this, do you know what I'm talking about? And you'd be like, no, I have no idea. I'd be like, okay, I'm not still explaining it correctly. Like the <laughs> idea that, <laughs> the idea, like what it is, it's just more of like, I use him as my, like, he's like, okay, I now understand. I'm like, okay, great. Like, right, spell right. check me because I can't, I can't spell at all. And then, like, I, I'll eventually get that done, but like, that would be something that, like, people could, uh, a lot of things, a lot of the questions you're asking me would just be like, here you go. Here's all the answers. Probably far too much detail than you actually needed, but like I'm a, I'm a, I don't like giving people just like, like just like a, this is how you do it. Like here's, here's your, here's your only answer. I'd rather teach them like, this is why your project is failing. This is what is happening. This, this is how you have to go about it. Like that metaphor of like, um, like you give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach a man a fish, they can eat for a lifetime. I'd rather teach people how to problem solve instead of just being like, oh yeah, you just do this. And they say, okay, they do that. It works that one time. They go to another project and they're like, oh, right. I just do this and it's fail. And they don't understand why. And I'm like, it's, and I'm like, cause at this point you're doing something completely different and you don't understand why you did that that correction the first time because nobody taught you why you're doing that you were just following rules and like that doesn't help people to learn the process it just helps that one at one time right i agree you know i used to do a lot of really detailed tutorials about my um uh, paper flowers and i got a lot of a feedback about like well just show us how you put it together and I was like, no, you don't understand, right? Like, if you want to, like, take your time to, like, listen to my class one time, I provide so much information because it's not just about the position of the flower, right? Like, like one of those things that people often make a mistake with the, uh, with the flower is when they start to uh, put the petals, right, in the order, they, all, they, 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 um, they don't look to put it in relationship to the to the to the previous petal they look in the base itself and then what happens it actually skews them off right and instead of yeah. doing it like um it, and then it, and it's it's all about like the eye perception they're just like you know you just need to pause and tell your brain don't look in the middle of the base look at the petal instead but all of the people always look at the base and the next thing you know, you have this like tiny squishy flower. And it's like, well, if you just listen to my video or explain this to nauseum, you'd know. Don't look at your base, look at your petal. So, um, but uh, it, it's one of those few things that I think that people who, you know, like want to succeed and make a, like a serious go of it, they understand that it's all about like the actual knowledge. And then you can apply it to the uh, product, right? Because you understand. 
but yeah, like, and like that's just it. It's like I got like that knowledge of like why I am doing something is something one I learned in school. Then I learned from but when I got jobs, I had somebody else who's had my job teach me how to do it. Um, I regularly take classes. Um, like, like I said before, like the people from Oracle will come down and be like, here's a new product. Here's how you install it. Like, here's how you, here's, here, here's how you use our new product because they want to teach me how to use it so that we obviously buy it from them. If, right. if, if, if you don't know how to use your product, you're not purchasing it. And because like nobody, nobody's teaching that to, um, like, like the crafting community doesn't have like a crafting school. Like there's, there's nobody where it's like, I, I have like, you, you see it all the time. Like I got a new cricket. What, where do I go? Like we need like one place to be like, you start here. Like, right. and unfortunately, like, you know, I'm also troubled that because, you know, a lot of a craft is sort of like self-taught, right? They can teach themselves like wrong things. Like my, my biggest thing, my, 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 my biggest pet peeve is the uh, epoxying over plastic. I mean, like, I cannot tell you how many times, like, I've seen the live videos by big influencers with, like, a thousand and thousand of followers, you know, pouring epoxy over, like, Starbucks cup, and I'll be like, what are you doing? Like, this is plastic, right? Like, that's not safe. And they'll be like, oh, you know, it's like, it's FDA approved. And it's like, well, no, not really. It's one or two components that have FDA approved. And, you know, you try to, to explain it to people and you just get like shut down. And I know that a lot of people exit out of this difficult conversation because they don't want a thousand, a thousand of people like yelling at them. Yeah, like that's, that's why a guy, one of the groups that I used to do like this, like what we're talking about, I used to do it Wednesday nights. And I, I just stopped because you would have like one or two people to be that were just like, well, that's not how you do it. That's not what I read. That's not what, and like I'm sitting there trying to figure out how to very politely tell them being like, I don't care what you read on so-and-so's mommy blog. I had an Oracle representative give me a two day course on how to install something. Right. I'm, I'm going to choose the people who actually make the product to tell me what their product can or can't do. Like, I'm, I'm going to trust them. Right. And then when, like a lot of people like just pile on, they're like, oh yeah, it's fine, it's fine. I'm like, okay, good, good luck. And I'm in three days for you. When you put your paint or tape, yes. right, you don't, oh. like, I mean, you eye it um, in the middle, but you don't measure it, right? Like for the, 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 the whole idea here is that it stays it stays put and the things are not moving around for you, right? Pardon? Like when you put your green paint or tape, like in the middle, like you don't measure it, you eye it. Like this is just for the purpose of keeping things in place. Yeah. 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 So like, like my, my tape, like that tape is, is, is I just throw it wherever. Like I, I use my, I use my alignment marks to make sure that my black is centered. And this is just, it's just wherever I threw it. Yeah, no, this is so brilliant. Like, seriously, I mean, like, I, I, it, it's just, you know, I've always struggled with the science because I, I do complete opposite of it. And this is just brilliant. I, I see people who are like, they'll be like, oh, now I'm just going to install a new vial and they just peel off the entire backer paper. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> like, the, the least amount of time you have your vinyl, like, so this, like, the black right now exposed to the air. Uh, you want to minimize that the, the most because like right now, you know, dust, dirt, uh, other things could be getting in underneath of here and like you want to get it down as fast as you can um, without absolutely rushing. And yes, that sharpening your, your blade with tin foil. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, you know, like I love GM and everything else, but like ever since she, you know, she said that like, you know, if you poke it in a tin foil, it's gonna get sharp and it just, it, 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 uh, it created this mess, you know, and uh, the luck trying to dissuade people of that, like, no, you really need real tools to sharpen it. Like, does your knife sharpen when you poke it into the tin foil? It doesn't, it's the same thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of feel like there is no point in trying to fight it, it just concentrates. Yeah. You know, the content in my group is as solid as possible. And then they're always, they're always just like, but it works, it works. I'm like, no, you're taking the grime off of your blade. You're cleaning it, which, you know, is something you should do, but you're not sharpening it. No. 
Hey, Anki, well, thank you so much. I will host this again. Um, uh, uh, Jenny, thank you so much for sticking with us. You win the award for you know being the dedicated uh, Zoom participant. Um, and uh, we'll do this soon again. And the next time, you know, we'll have like a project prepared. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're suggesting to people that, you know, it's uh, like, you know, join us. So you hear the supplies that you need and uh, we'll do this as a group thing. Yeah, sounds good. Well, thank you so much, Amanda. This was eye opening. No problem. Uh, also, I'll, I'll link all the things that I was talking about. Well, I have a video of all of this, so, you know. <laughs> all right, take care. Yeah. Bye.